Being the president of Russia is definitely not the safest job at the moment. But then again, it never was, as Vladimir Putin can testify after surviving 43 attempts in his life. Yes, the current president of Russia was never one to hide away from danger, but he certainly doesn't take his security lightly. As a result, Putin is now one of the most heavily guarded people on the planet. Despite this, attempts on Putin's life were never in shortage, and surviving this record number of attacks is a testament to the professionalism and readiness of everyone involved in the president's security. Assassination Attempts Surviving an assassination attempt has become like a biannual tradition of Vladimir Putin, so it's no wonder his security detail and tactics are so good. They had a lot of training in real-life situations, after all. Luckily for the president, none of these attempts came even close to finishing the job. At least a few, however, were done highly professionally. He became a target of the Russian Mafia as soon as he took the presidential post in 1999. It was a sort of preliminary strike, as Putin cracked down on organized crime and stood firm in his determination to uproot it. However, an elaborate car bombing plot was foiled and the culprits were caught and sent to jail, or hell, whichever was closer. The same year, a group of militants planned to assassinate Putin during his visit to Uzbekistan. The plot was uncovered, leading to the arrest of the conspirators before any harm could be done. In 2000, Chechen rebels planned an assassination during Putin's visit to the Russian province. During a visit to Chechnya, a remote-controlled bomb was detonated near Putin's motorcade. The president survived the attack, but several of his security personnel were injured. In 2002, a plot involving poisoned jam was uncovered when Putin was scheduled to have breakfast at a hotel in Yalta. The discovery allowed for swift intervention and the prevention of a poisoning attempt. The same year, during a parade in Moscow's Red Square, snipers were positioned with a plan to target Putin. However, the FSO caught wind of the situation and swiftly prevented the execution of the plan. 2002 was definitely not the best for the Russian president, as he survived yet another assassination attempt, this time in Azerbaijan. An Iraqi man with connections to Chechen rebel forces planned the attempt. The Azerbaijan police, however, apprehended the man, and he was later sentenced to 10 years in prison. Later the same year, another man tried to end Putin with an explosion. He planned to drive along the motorway adjacent to the Kremlin and detonate a 40-kilogram explosive. The FSO caught wind of this plot and rerouted the president's limousine while at the same time eliminating the threat. 2003 was no exception, and once again, Putin was the target of an assassination plot, this time on British soil. The British anti-terror police apprehended two men plotting to kill Putin during his visit to London. Apparently, the Russian secret services caught wind of the plot and altered their colleagues in Great Britain. A year later, Russian security services discovered a plot to poison Putin's food during a visit to a foreign country. The specific details and location of the incident were not made public, but it seems Putin is either immortal or his food tasters were up to the task at hand. Assassination attempts continued through the years, as one more became a major news sensation. In 2012, Ukrainian authorities arrested a group of individuals planning to assassinate Putin during his visit to the country. The exact nature of the plot and its intended execution were not publicly disclosed. But soon after, the Maidan started. So, I'll leave the rest to conspiracy theorists. Looking from afar, it may sound like Vladimir Putin is always traveling with a four-leaf clover, a rabbit foot, and at least a dozen of other lucky charms. Luck, however, has nothing to do with the president's resilience to assassination attempts. It's the meticulous work of the FSO and everyone associated with Putin's protection. And when we're talking about security teams, the Federal Protective Service is definitely the best in the world. The FSO the Federal Protective Service, FSO, is a powerful agency deeply rooted in the history of the KGB, the renowned Soviet Intelligence Agency. Established after the dissolution of the Soviet Union, 
the FSO assumed responsibility for protecting high-ranking government officials, securing essential government facilities, and safeguarding classified information. Over the years, the FSO has expanded its sphere of influence, absorbing various other government agencies under its purview. This consolidation has granted the FSO significant control over the distribution of the Russian budget, allowing them to allocate funds as they see fit. Consequently, the agency wields considerable power and has become known for its ability to align financial resources with its objectives. At the helm of the FSO is Viktor Zolotov, a complex and controversial figure. Zolotov, unlike other close friends of Vladimir Putin, is not a billionaire. The poor fellow has to survive on only $40 million, which is a travesty considering how often he has to work to protect the president. Interestingly, Zolotov has almost zero assets in the Western world, which is lucky for him, as in 2019 he was sanctioned due to multiple gruesome human rights violations. Though the assets of its leader are somewhat known, FSO keeps its budget and spending secret. Although specific figures are hard to come by, reports indicate that the FSO commands a substantial annual budget, potentially amounting to several billion rubles. Additionally, the FSO boasts an extensive workforce, estimated to comprise around 50,000 personnel, dedicated to fulfilling its diverse range of responsibilities. The FSO is truly a force to be reckoned with, but they are not the only ones keeping an eye on Putin's safety. Putin's Private Army As a KGB agent, Putin is well aware that plots on his life come predominantly from within, so the president wisely never puts all of his eggs in one basket. That's valid even for the FSO, especially for the FSO. As a countermeasure to the agency's growing power, Vladimir Putin can rely on one truly formidable force, the National Guard. Established in 2016 by the president himself, this unit now counts more than 340,000 troops, all of them answering directly to Putin. The maintenance and operation of Putin's private army entail substantial costs for the Russian taxpayers. Current estimates suggest that the annual upkeep of this extensive force amounts to approximately 200 billion rubles, equivalent to around 2.7 billion US dollars. A small price to pay to prevent any notions of a military coup, this formidable force, however, is not tasked with preventing assassination attempts or saving the president's life. Instead, they are tasked to look scary and deter any high official, be it military or otherwise, from thinking they can get the upper hand with some soldiers behind their backs. Even Evgeny Prigozhin, leader of the fearsome Wagner PMC, knows that if he goes against Putin, he will fail and lose everything. The unit that truly steps in front of bullets and blends with the crowds to protect the president is the President's Security Service. The SPP Služba Bezopasnosti Presidenta, whose pronunciation I probably butchered, is a specialized agency within the FSO that is tasked with securing the president's life. Comprising four distinct special units and bolstered by approximately 2,500 additional personnel, the SBP stands as the personal guard tasked with preserving the safety and well-being of the Russian president. This multi-layered approach demonstrates the extent to which President Putin goes to protect his position of authority and maintain stability within the country. So naturally, it's unsurprising that all 43 assassination attempts against him failed. The innermost layer in Putin's defense is his personal bodyguards. That's the only part of his entire defense force you will see on the ground. The rest operate behind the scenes and, more often than not, finish the job way before the bodyguards are needed. If this personal detachment is required to take action, around 2,500 people fail in their jobs. Meticulously chosen and extensively trained, these elite operatives strive to be the world's best personal protection unit. Unlike their American counterparts, who focus on incapacitating attackers, the SBP has a more lethal mandate. 
They are authorized to eliminate anyone they perceive as a threat. Former police officers are said to be excluded from this role, as their training in apprehension could hinder their willingness to use lethal force. Instead, the SBP relies on highly skilled operational psychologists, capable of discerning potential threats by analyzing a person's facial expressions. Members of the SBP must possess exceptional stamina and the ability to endure extreme temperatures. Displaying signs of weakness, such as shivering or sweating, is considered unfavorable, as President Putin detests any display of vulnerability. Additionally, these bodyguards, known as the Musketeers, undergo stringent physical requirements. They must be between 19 and 35 years old, stand between 5.7 and 6.2 feet tall, and maintain a visibly fit and muscular physique weighing between 75 and 90 kilograms. Fluency in at least five foreign languages and a deep understanding of politics are also prerequisites for becoming one of Putin's trusted guards. Seen by the president's side, the musketeers exude an imposing presence while carrying distinctive black leather briefcases. However, these seemingly ordinary briefcases are state-of-the-art bulletproof shields, capable of withstanding various calibers of bullets. But defense is not their sole expertise. They are highly trained combatants, equipped with 9mm Gerza pistols loaded with armor-piercing bullets, effective up to 50 meters. Their arsenal also includes Kevlar umbrellas, which serve both as shields against small-caliber weapons and functional umbrellas. In addition to the Musketeers, the protective apparatus consists of other units working behind the scenes. The second unit comprises secret guards dispersed among the public, adept at observing and detecting signs of unrest. These highly trained psychologists use facial expressions, walking patterns, and posture to discern potential threats. While their combat capabilities remain undisclosed, their primary role is to gather intelligence and coordinate with other units to neutralize threats. The third unit comprises elite snipers strategically positioned atop buildings and inside apartments, providing constant surveillance. While the exact number of snipers remains undisclosed, some nests are intentionally placed in visible locations to deter potential assailants. These sharpshooters possess exceptional nerves of steel and meticulously scan for any signs of danger. To further ensure the President's security, the fourth unit is responsible for securing the perimeter during Putin's movements outside the Kremlin. They meticulously plan routes, avoiding potential choke points and areas prone to civil unrest. This unit faces additional complexities when traveling abroad, working closely with local law enforcement agencies to preemptively address potential threats. They also secure the President's accommodations, meticulously searching for explosives and spy devices, sealing the premises until Putin's arrival. The unit also hand-picks the staff accompanying Putin on foreign visits to ensure the utmost safety. In addition, food tasters, an integral part of the entourage, diligently examine and taste any food served to the Russian leader, maintaining utmost vigilance against potential poisoning attempts. As you can imagine, this entire operation doesn't come cheap. So naturally, most of Putin's visits cost millions of dollars, even if he's abroad only for a night or two. That's nothing, however, compared to the draconian measures Vladimir Putin takes when traveling at home. A state-of-the-art limousine is only the tip of the iceberg when it comes to Putin's security during travel. Putin's Limo Whenever the president travels inside Russia, the SBP leaves no room for errors and has various plans to secure the president's road. Naturally, Putin's motorcade plays a vital role in ensuring the president's safety. However, calling it simply a motorcade is a massive understatement, as it looks more like a genuine military parade. 
Typically, the president's limousine is accompanied by no less than six armored vans, housing highly trained special operations units armed to the teeth with AK-47s, Dragonov sniper rifles, anti-tank grenade launchers, portable anti-aircraft missile systems, and probably a couple of ICBMs just to look even more threatening. The center of attention, of course, goes to the presidential limo, an awe-inspiring Russian-made Aura Senate, has the honor of protecting the most important man in Russia. As Putin took significant steps in limiting his reliance on Western products, Thus, in 2017, he ordered this ambitious project to construct a state limousine equivalent to his former Mercedes-Benz S600 Guard Pullman. To meet all the specifications the SBP demanded, Aorus had to invest more than $200 million in creating this one-of-a-kind limousine. This mobile bunker boasts unparalleled fortifications. The Aorus Senate can withstand a barrage of challenges including bullets of any caliber, sniper fire, landmines, chemical gas attacks, and even small-scale missile assaults. Equipped with cutting-edge communication systems, the vehicle effectively functions as a mobile command center. Even when the blinds of its windows are fully sealed, an ultra-modern closed-circuit television CCTV system grants the security team inside a comprehensive 360-degree view of the surrounding perimeter. A concealed emergency exit is discreetly positioned at the car's rear as an added security measure. One can only wonder what other James Bond-like features this car boasts. Still, compared to Joe Biden's beast, the Aorus Senat is just a glorified sedan. If you doubt this, just check out my video on the US President's motorcade next.